Let us be still in the presence of the Lord. El Shaddai, we reverence your holy name. We lift your name on high. Father, who is like unto thee? The beginning and the end. The altar and finisher of our faith. Father, we don't know how to thank you. We don't know how else to use our voice to worship you. We don't know how else to bow. But we say thank you. We love you, Lord. We praise you for all you are doing and all you are yet to do. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Let us rise up and welcome one another. We are heirs of the Father. We are jointed with the Son. We are children of the kingdom. We are family. We are one. We are one. We are heirs of the Father. to come together to worship God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to welcome you in this arena this morning. Hallelujah. For this is the day that the Lord has made that you will rejoice and be glad in. Hallelujah. As the praise and worship was going on. Hallelujah. I, I was just meditating, seeing myself in his presence. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. I felt his presence in the house. Hallelujah. Amen. God is indeed in this place. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So a word was dropped in my heart. That a sower must reap. So I'm like, God, we are worshiping. We are praising you. We are lifting your name above all names. Why is so I must reap? The Lord says, say that to my people. A sower must reap. So what are you sowing? Is the question. What is it that you are sowing? Because whatever you put in the ground, that is what you will reap. You cannot sow a mango. And reap an orange. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. No matter the technology. You will sow a mango. And an orange together. A mango will grow. Orange will grow. You cannot sow a mango. And reap an orange. Manduku shkalaba. So let us be careful of what we are sowing. Because whatever you saw, you that is listening, 
You that is watching, you that is following us, YouTube, Facebook, whatever means you're following us from. Hallelujah. What are you sowing? What are you sowing to your neighbors? What are you sowing to your family? What are you sowing in the house of God? What are you sowing? Are you sowing good? Because if you sow good, the Lord says you will reap good. If you sow bad, you will reap bad. What are you sowing? Are you scattering? Or are you gathering? Whatever a man soweth, that he will reap. Hallelujah. So I want to tell us this morning that God loves us so much. He wants us to sow good. Hallelujah. He wants us to sow good so that we will reap good in his house. He wants us to sow good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He in the half years, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. So think. Puzzle about that. What are you sowing? What kind of seed are you sowing? If God comes now, what will you tell him you're sowing in his house? What will you tell him you're sowing in the life of that brother, that sister, that neighbor, that stranger you saw on the way? Hallelujah. And there is this song that says, Whatsoever you do to the least of my brothers that you do unto me. What are you doing? Are you looking at what you're doing? Are you doing that thing knowing that you're doing it unto the Lord? Are you scattering or are you gathering? Thank you, Jesus. So I want to encourage us this morning to sow right, to do right. Because whatsoever we do, whatsoever we sow, that is what we will reap. Hallelujah. Please let us rise up as we welcome our daddy in the Lord. The man that God has chosen to feed us this morning. Whom I know that is coming to sow a good food. <laughs> He's sowing something good. As you receive it, don't keep it to yourself alone. Let others know about it. Let others enjoy from you. For the Bible said that you are the salt of the earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you don't let anybody to test your saltiness, you will remain to yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. And the salt is not meant to remain to itself. Salt is meant to please, to, to put taste to people's life or whatever they are eating. To put some sweetening. To put some fa flavor to whatever. Hallelujah. Amen. If you have ever eaten something cooked without salt, you will know how it is. We ate it in those days back in Africa during the war. And we can tell you, it wasn't good taste. Soup, food without salt. Doesn't taste good. But when you put a little toss, a little pinch of salt to it, you taste the goodness of that food. Amen. Let people taste and know that God is good in your life. Yeah. Be the mirror. Yes. Let people see Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us rise up as we welcome our dear daddy in the Lord, Bishop Cleophas. Amade,
otwa kachineka yidi akini ba o akini ba otwa kachineka yidi akini ba o otwa kachineka yidi
his sons and daughters even this moment in the name of Jesus I can see chains and shackles be broken even this morning in the name of Jesus I can see God alleviating sons and daughters to the highest height even this morning in the name of Jesus Lord I give you glory I give you all the honor I give you all the adoration because you are faithful God Father accept the sacrifice of our praise and worship may you alone receive all glory may you alone receive all honor even this moment in the name of Jesus. Father, we cover this vicinity with the blood of Jesus. Father, we cover the aspect of this place with the blood of Jesus. Father, we lift up men and women and families that are watching on television. Even in diverse areas all over the world. Father, we commit them into your able hands. Lord, we pray for demonstration of your power. We pray that your name alone will be exalted even in the course of this prayer in the name of Jesus. Father, I humble myself even this morning. I pray that your spirit increase in me. Lord, every word that will proceed out of my lips will not come in ties with the words of my wisdom, forming the lives of your sons and your daughters, that we can become exactly what you have called us to be. So we have decreed and prayed this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And amen. And amen. If you believe that, say, I believe. I believe. Can we have our seat? Praise the name of the living God. Our God is wonderful. I thank God this morning. I'm so excited. And I thank God seeing each and every one of us healthy and happy and standing in the presence of God. And I decree and I declare that anything that would deprive you of receiving from God this moment, we challenge it, we terminate it, and we destroy it right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and we give you glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. Holy Spirit, have your way in our midst. Even at this very moment, in Jesus' powerful name, yeah. amen. Our text this morning is actually taken from the book of Judges, chapter 6 and verse 12. Judges 6 and verse 12. And the Bible says, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of what? Velour. Praise the name of the living God. The Lord is speaking to somebody at this moment. The Lord is speaking to you right now. At times we underestimate ourselves. At times we allow the enemies and whatever that we can see that is a worldly standard to actually dictate our relationship with God. Or maybe what is our inside. Let me tell you something. God is a marvelous God. When he says he is with you, he is with you. Praise the name of the living God. Are you with me, somebody? Praise the name of the living God. Our subject this morning is Gideon, the great small. Gideon, 
the great small. Now I want you to understand that Gideon, when we look at that title, it says Gideon and it says the great small. But I want you to understand that at times when God calls us into a particular task, when we look at ourselves from head to toe, we kind of quantify ourselves that we are not capable and we don't have what it takes to be able to do that task that God has called us. But I want you to understand, before God calls you into any task, he will actually look at you. He will actually examine you. He will actually make sure that he equipped you with what it takes to be able to do that task for him and do it exactly the way he has programmed. Praise the name of the living God. So I want to tell us this morning, so when God chooses his people, he doesn't look at your height, doesn't look at your size, or maybe your uh, academic uh, 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 pedigree, or look at whatsoever that you think that it, it what's it. No, God looks beyond that. Hallelujah. God looks what? Beyond that. He doesn't look at how great, how mighty, how muscular, even how intelligent you are. Because many a time, our intelligence to God is foolishness. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. So I want to prepare us this morning. Let us look at Judges chapter 6. We are going to read from verse 11 through 16. Praise the name of the living God. And the Bible says in verse 11, And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which was in Ophrah, that pertained unto Joshua, Josh, the Abirak, Abi, right, and his son Gideon, treasured wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And verse 12. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And verse 12, verse 13, And Gideon said unto him, Now look at, listen to this. Gideon is actually bold. And yet, he considered himself to be very poor. He considered himself to be the least from his family. He considered himself to be that came from a family, the poorest family in Manasseh. But yet, God is telling him his qualification. He said, Gideon said unto the Lord, Oh my Lord, if the Lord, has, is if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befalling us? That's a question. Which means they are going through things. I don't know what you are going through today. I don't know the circumstances and situation that you find yourself. But I want you to understand that at times we start questioning God. We start questioning different things, especially when it's befalling us or when something is happening in our lives, just like in the life of Gideon. He's questioning God and he's so bold. And he said, God, why is it all these things? Befalling us. And where be all his miracles. Which our fathers told us. Told us of saying. Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt. But now the Lord has forsaken us. And delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And verse 14. And the Lord looked upon him. Hallelujah. When he said this to God, how, where are you? Why are we going through this? Why are we encountering all these situations and circumstances? I thought that when I know that God is with me, nothing shall befall me. When I know that God is with me, no problems can come to me. Why is it that I'm going through this, Lord? Why? Why am I having this situation? Why am I encountering all these numerous problems coming from all directions? This is exactly what he was telling God. And I know 
that you have blessed our people. You brought our fathers, our forefathers out of Egypt by your strength and by your power. Yes. And where is that miracle that you have performed during those days and even right now? Why are we going through what we are going through right now? Some of us might be asking that question and saying to yourselves, why am I going through what I'm going through right now? Why is it that God has forsaken me? Tell your neighbor, say the Bible says that God cannot forsake you. You are not saying like you mean it. Tell your neighbor, say, God cannot forsake me. Amen. How many of us believe that? Hallelujah. If you believe that, I want you to understand. He says, I will neither leave you, nor what? Forsake you. So no matter what you are going through, you are not alone. No matter what you are facing right now, you are not alone. But you have to understand that the enemy will consistently interject in your heart, in your mind, to try to frustrate you to now deny God or start saying things against God. Many a time we are put into strange tests. God is testing each and every one of us to see exactly where we are with him. Amen. And yet the enemy will be saying to us that God has left you alone. Can I see that? Don't remove that. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want you to understand that this question that this young man is asking is a question that we can we ask ourselves on a daily basis. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. So in that verse 14, he said that the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might. Hallelujah. This guy is bold, and God said, Go in this your might, hallelujah, and thou shalt do what? Save Israel from what? From the hands of the what? Of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee a question? Yes. Now look at verse 15. And he said unto him, He said, It's good to dialogue with God. Hallelujah. Yes. It's good. To dialogue with God. It's good to invite God into your situation. If you look at the life of David, when he encountered Goliath, he told Goliath, when Goliath looked at him, he said, look at this little, little dog coming before me. I will in fact take the carcass, your carcass, and then spread it to the birds of the earth. That is exactly what he says to him. And he has, he has all the equipments, that, that he needs to engage in battle. And then all of a sudden he saw somebody very, very tiny. He looked at him. He looked down at him. He said, why are you coming to me with just catapult? A fling shot. Why are they, why are you, why is it that Israelites are just disgracing me? Bringing somebody so small like this man. Tell your neighbor, say, I might be small in your eyes. I am dangerous in the hands of God. You are not, you're not saying with authority. Listen, 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 listen. Obedience is better than what? When revelation is coming forth in preaching, many a time we don't catch it. I say, tell your neighbor, talk to your neighbor, say, neighbor, I might be small. In your, in your sight, but I am dangerously, dangerously made, made in, the in the hands of God. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, he says to us, you are my battle axe. You are my weapon of war. He said, with thee will I destroy nations, kingdoms. With thee will I tear down men and women with thee will I scatter shepherds let me tell you tell your neighbor I'm equipped, I'm equipped. By, the by the power and the authority, and the authority of, the of the most high God if you believe that can we shout a powerful hallelujah yes. let me tell you the bible said there is power in our tongues it said that those that know how to use it shall eat the fruit thereof there is power surging out from your mouth. And let me tell you something. No matter how small that tongue is, it's so powerful. 
And the Bible says the power to liberate you is also in your tongue. The power to condemn you is also in your tongue. So as preaching is going on and you are making all these declarations, you are actually edifying your body. If you believe that, can we shout a powerful hallelujah? hallelujah? So here Gideon was just having this conversation with God. And he says to God, Oh my Lord, where will, shall I save Israel? How can me save Israel? Me, little me. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. And I am the least. First of all, he says, he says, Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh. And I am the least in my father's house. All this is trying to disqualify himself when he's qualified. He's trying to disqualify himself when God has already qualified him. So I don't know the area that you feel that you are incapable. I don't know the area that you feel inadequate. I don't know the area you feel that God has deserted you from. I don't know the area you think that you are alone. But whatever it is that you find yourself because the enemy has made a mistake, allowing you to be here today, I want you to understand that your life is taking a new turn. Yeah. A new turn for good. Yeah. Not a new turn for bad. Yeah. If you believe, can we shout a powerful hallelujah? hallelujah? Many a time, we really, really, as Christians, we forget that we are product of what we confess with our mouth. Many people are going through what they're going through today simply because of what they use their mouth to say. Hallelujah. People are carrying loads that are not meant for them simply because of ignorance and stupidity. Hallelujah. A man for, for, for Sarah happens to come when the time that Jesus himself was to be hung on the cross. And all of a sudden Jesus was so tired. And what happened? They faced him out amongst all their people. He wasn't even a citizen or an indigenous of that particular city. And they asked him to bear the cross of Jesus. The man I know, he must have said, I'm not from here, please. And they said, you must carry it. I pray and I decree any load that you are carrying, that God has not placed over you. Any load that the enemy has made you to carry out of ignorance. I want you to rise on your feet. Any load you are carrying right now. That is not meant for you. And the enemy is using it to drag you down. The enemy is used to destroy you. I command you now to relinquish that load to the owner of that load. Let the owner of that load carry their load. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth right now. That load you are carrying that is not of God, I pray right now, relinquish that load upon the owner of that load. Any ploys and plans of the enemy against your life for you to carry and bear a load that is supposed not to carry, I command that load to return back to its sender, to return back to its sender, to return back to its sender. But even if they carry this load by mistake, even if they carry it by by by. By, by not understanding the circumstances, Lord Jesus, I command that Lord to be returned back to sender in Jesus' name. I would like you to have your seats. You cannot carry what is not meant for you. The Bible says to us, every body must be relinquished to God. Hallelujah. You are not meant to carry any body. When that man left his place, he never planned that he would carry a cross. Hallelujah. Amen. Some of us might be happy and glad that I'm carrying his cross. Let me tell you, that guy can tell you how much heavy that cross was. Hallelujah. Amen. So I pray today that God will exonerate you from what you don't even know about. Amen. And you find yourself entangled in it. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. That's a mistake. That a lot of us will make. But let us go back to, Je to, to Judges chapter 6 and verse 15. The Bible stated that this man, this young man, was bold enough to dialogue with God and try to explain 
to God his inadequacy. But at the same time, God himself has what it takes to actually make him to become what he wants him to be. Amen. Are you following me? So now he listed all this. Let us see the next verse. And the Bible stated in verse 16, it said, And the Lord said unto him, after all this explanation that is given unto the Lord, the Lord now said unto me, He said, Surely unto him, surely I will be with thee. In other words, I know the reason behind you, your explanation is that you are trying to tell me I am not capable. I am not worthy. I don't have what it takes to be able to carry out these tasks. Hallelujah. Amen. But here, God is saying, I understand all that, but I want you to understand that I will be with you. Hallelujah. If God is for you, who can be against you? So any situation you find yourself and by power of revelation is cleared unto your heart that God is with you, would you be afraid? No. Someone is not talking to me. No. You will not be. So here God is reassuring Gideon and he's saying to Gideon, he said, Gideon, listen, I will be with thee and thou shalt smit the Midianites as one man. As one man. Now, when we look at the life of Samson, we can see how powerful God has made Samson. Hallelujah. Amen. He used a jawbone of an animal and killed many, many soldiers. Jawbone. So I want you to understand, when God gets into you, when God is behind you, when the Spirit of God comes upon you, He stands you up and He makes you strong that you can withstand whatsoever that of the enemy that the enemy is bringing against you. But the enemy will continue to interject in your heart to tell you you are not capable of withstanding these people. Are you following me? Are you with me, somebody? Praise the name of the living God. I say, Praise the name of the living God. So, our God is wonderful and He's so powerful. So I want to start by letting us understand Gideon actually referred himself as a poor man. A man that is so poor. And also he went further to list that his household, they are the least in that place. Hallelujah. And he's in list also in his, fa his family. And I want us to understand that all these things that he's trying to explain to God. But I want you to understand one thing. All his estimation is based on worldliness. World's standard. Hallelujah. You know, at times somebody might look at you. They say, what can you do? Hallelujah. Amen. So when David encountered Goliath, he told Goliath, yes, I understand. You are coming with your spares, with your javelin, with your machet, with your shield, and everything that you will use for war. But do you know what you are trying to do? You are defiling the armies of Jesus Christ. You are defiling the army of God. Listen, I'm not here to fight you, but you are here to fight God. You see how intelligently he invites God into that war. Somebody's not hearing me. He just gradually draw God into the battle. At times we have prayers and in the form, in that prayer, in the midst of that prayer, we find a way to bring God inside that prayer. We bring him inside the circumstances that we are facing. Every time situation arises in our lives, let me tell you, the Bible says in the book of John, it says, without me, you can't do nothing. So what you do is that you invite God into that situation that you are facing. Many of us, we try to use our brains, we try to use experiences and everything that is around us to fight. But no, 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 no. Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? I say nobody. Who can battle with the Lord? 
Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? I say, nobody. So when you invite God into your situation, when you invite God in your battle, uh -huh. hey, that battle changes. Yeah. Are, you listening, are you listening to me? That battle do what? That battle will change instantly. Not changing that they will hurt you, but changing in your favor. So it's not understanding me. God awaits his sons, his daughters to call upon him. That is why in the book of Jeremiah 3 verse 3, he said, call upon me and I'll do what? I will answer you and then show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. Invite me into that situation. Then I will explain to you how to navigate yourself out of that situation. Invite me into that situation. Then I will make you strong enough to handle it. Let me tell you, God is real. God is awesome. God is powerful. And don't allow anybody to deceive you and tell you otherwise. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yes. At times we set our ten tables and say, God, I'm giving you two weeks. If you don't do this for me, then I'll find an alternative. Let me tell you, that alternative is dragging you to death. That alternative is destroying you. Are you following me? The only way out in any situation is God's way. I say what? God's way and God's what? God's will. The Bible says in the book of Romans that whosoever that cometh unto the Lord must first of all know that he exists. And he emphasized on that. He said that he exists. Which means you know that God is alive and well and he's over that situation. Is there any situation, is there any problem that you have that is bigger than God? No. I just hear a few people just talk. No. Is there any situation that is bigger than your God? No. If that situation is not bigger than your God, it means that that situation is beneath you. Amen. Am I making sense? Yes. I don't care what the doctors say. I don't care what the state say. I don't care what president say. I don't care what the economy is saying. But what I know is that I'm not operating by the law of this land. I'm operating spiritually through the law of the Most High God. Let me tell you, I'm operating by the power of the Most High God. That's what that makes a difference. If you don't place yourself where you ought to be, do you think that somebody will place you there? Have you ever seen somebody you call you on the phone? I want to advertise you today. Uh, please, can you permit me to go and advertise you? It doesn't happen. You advertise yourself. Am I right? Yes, Am I right? Yes, Many a time we encounter situations. Many a times we face trials and tribulations. Our worst enemies are household wickedness. Nobody will want to destroy you except somebody close to you. Nobody that will hate your progress except those that are close to you. Are you listening to me? So you must stand here and say, I have no enemies. <laughs> your enemy is Kanku. I want you to understand that. You have enemies everywhere you go. Even in your workplace. If you receive promotion. That same day. An enemy will emerge. If you are a medical doctor. Let me tell you this. If you are a medical doctor. That same day that you receive a job. And you appear in that place. You will be surprised. The enemy is already waiting for you. Right there in that office. As a Christian, you must understand that. Even if you're a bishop, even if you're a pastor, that same day you're ordained, other pastors around you, they are your enemies. Are you following me? You bought a new car. They saw your new car. 
instead of jubilating, rejoicing with you, in fact, they are saying this car must catch fire. They are just laughing and shouting. All they are doing, this car catch fire. Are you listening to me? When you understand how this world operates, that's what the Bible says, pray without what? Season. That's why I love that prayer that says, to whom it may what? Concern. Any man, any woman, planning against your downfall, they will fall first before you. Are you listening to me? Any man, any woman, conspiring to bring your destinies down, they will fall first for your sake in Jesus' name. Any covenant, any control, where deliberations and decisions have been passed against your family, against your life, by the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I challenge that today, by the oracle of God, I command it to be destroyed today, in Jesus' name. No weapon formed or fashion against you that will ever prosper. Every tongue written up against you in judgment. I condemn them today. I say 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 I condemn them today. In Jesus' name. Have your seats. Let me say this to you. We are not here to joke. We are praying. And our prayers must touch the third heaven. Amen. And the manifold blessings of God must descend upon you. Amen. If you believe that, can we shout a powerful hallelujah? hallelujah? Let us examine three factors. Three key factors. As it relates or pertains to Gideon. Number one. Hallelujah. Amen. The book of Judges is a book of cycles that gives background to what? To Gideon. Amen? Amen. Subsection A. The Bible stated that the cycle starts with what? With sin. Because sin stepped in, then God decided to forsake them. Are you following me? Are you with me, somebody? Because sin steps in, the people of Israel did evil in the sight of God by following after another God. Because God, his name is jealous. And God is what? A jealous God. If God is a jealous God, why provoking his jealousy? Listen to me. Why provoking his what? His jealousy. If you know I'm a jealous man, why making me jealous? You will make God to come with fury. You will make him to come with the greatest route. Are you following me, somebody? I want you to listen to me. I want you to understand what I'm saying to you. And I'm not here to deceive you. I'm here to tell you the truth. And the Bible says you shall know the truth. And that truth will do what? Make you free. I don't want to use the word set free. A lot of people that are set free, they apprehend them and bring them back. But when you are made free, it means that every hair from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet is freed. Are you with me, somebody? Yes. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Then look at the subsection B. It said that the circle continues with what? God's punishment. God's punishment. God's punishment will come as a result of what? As a result of sin. Are you with me? Praise the name of the living God. So we can see that actually the Lord gave them up and allowed the oppressors to come and oppress them. Hallelujah. He allowed the oppressors to oppress them. When you go back to the book of Ecclesiastes 7, 7, it says that when the spirit of oppression, I'm just paraphrasing it, it says when the spirit of oppression comes upon a man, he make it a wise man or a wise woman to become what? Foolish. So instead of you making right decisions, you make wrong decisions. If every time you have to make wrong, right decisions, you see yourself making wrong decisions. And you think that it's all about you. It's not about you. It's God putting that punishment on you. Yes. You go into exams as you are taking it and you want to mark A. Mistakenly, you mark B. In your eyes, it's A. 
But B is there. Because as a result of what? Punishment. Am I making sense? Even if I'm not making sense, I'm less concerned. Now look at subsection C. The Bible says that the circle also moves with what? Cry to God for what? For help. Never a time since I've been studying this scripture and I found out where sons and daughters of God cry out and say, God, I need your help. And God tell them, I will not help you. That's not true. That is not part of his makeup. And that is not his nature. When you cry unto God, what happens? God will respond to you. Are you with me? So we can see that actually because of the evil that they have done against God and then cried out, out for God because they have, must have realized their mistakes, then the Bible stated clearly that God also responded to them. Substation D. And the Bible says that the circle ends with God answering what? Their prayer. Let me take you to the book of Judges chapter 6 and look at verse 7 through 10. And the Bible stated and it says, It came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel. We say it unto them, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage. Hallelujah. Amen. Now listen, God had their cry and God did what? He sent forth what? A prophet. A prophet just like he sent one today. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? I want you to listen to me attentively. He sent forth what? A prophet. The Bible did not say that God came down. He said he sent forth a prophet. I want you to understand that prophets, they are agents of release. Prophets are what? Agents of what? Of release. Anytime something is sort of, God will send his human agent. And those human agents is who? Is the prophets. Are you following me, somebody? Praise the name of the living God. Netanyahu, president of, of, of Israel, did not give me a call this morning and say that we should pray for his country. Are you following me? Are you following me? But God touched my heart. And say, let this church, let us pray for them, right? Yes. You might think that that prayer doesn't work. It works. Corporate anointing breaks what? Yoke. Every yoke. Hallelujah. Are you with me, somebody? Yes. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. So in that verse 8, it says that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of what? Bondage. Hallelujah. And verse 9. And I deliver you out of the hands of the Egyptians and out of the hands of all that oppress you and drive them out of from, from before you and give you their what? Their land. Which means every move that God is doing, you can see it with your naked eyes. Right. Are you following me? Yes. Not only that he came to deliver you, uh -huh. he came to command those people that own that land to vacate right. for you to what? Occupy. Right. <laughs> Somebody's not hearing me. Yes. Are you with me, somebody? Yes. Yes. So I want you to understand where God is taking us this morning. You that is watching on television, I want you to understand where God is taking you. Let me tell you, in the book of Romans, the Bible made us to understand, it said that without faith, we cannot please God. So faith is so important, even in this prayer this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Through faith, you can draw from God. Through faith, you can receive those things that God has predestined for you. Through faith, God can change the dynamics of your life. Through faith in him, God can transform you to become whom you, had, you anticipated to become. Are you following me? Yes. And every one of us, we have faith. 
None of us can claim this morning and say, I don't have no faith. Yes, a portion of faith is being given to everyone. Starting from conception. That day, that, that day you become fetus in the womb. That's the day God interjects faith in you. So that faith is in you. And that faith needs to be what? Developed. So when you develop your faith, you must learn how to trust God. If you learn how to trust God, you must believe in his word. The Bible says in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word is what? God. So this word I'm sharing with us today is the word of God, and it carries the spirit of God. Hallelujah. When you believe it and trust it, let me tell you the spirit of God in that word will now navigate itself into that situation that seems insurmountable. That weakness that is in you, he make you strong. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That illness and sicknesses, you bring healing unto it. Hallelujah. Amen. John 6 and 63, he said that the, 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 it is the spirit of God that quickens it. The spirit of God is what that quickens. He said that the flesh profits nothing. Hallelujah. He said, but this word we are sharing, it is what? Spirit and it's what? Life. So the spirit of God, when he gain into your subconscious mind, all those things that are causing you not to receive from God, he will remove them from your mind, from your heart. Hallelujah. When he removes those things from your heart, hallelujah, what you are left with is the mind of Christ. If you have the mind of Christ in you, then there is nothing that you require from him that you cannot receive. I want to break it down for you to understand. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell your neighbor, tell your, touch your neighbor gently, say, neighbor. neighbor. God, has God has blessed me today. Amen. Are you with me, somebody? Yes. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Now, if you look at verse number 9. I'm sorry, go to verse 10. Verse 10, the Bible says, and I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of Amorites. Now listen to me. If there is no strange gods in that land, God the creator of the heavens and the earth will not tell them not to be afraid of that gods of the Amorites. Am I right about that? Yes. So that tells me there's wickedness existing even in the midst of God's people. But because that, that wickedness is there, God is instructing you that you should not be afraid of them. Because he's there to do what? To protect you. He's there to fight the unseen battles that you cannot fight. Are you listening to me? He is there to make sure he dismantle their structures and terminate their ways and scatter their plans. So that the perfect will of God can materialize in your life. Are you following me? So God is speaking here. And he's speaking to his son. And he's letting him understand that he should not be afraid of the gods of the Amorites. In whose land ye dwell. Remember that they occupied that land. Hallelujah. And that land belonged to somebody else. So they can provoke their God or invoke their God and say, go into battle for us. These people that came to take our land, they came to take that land unjustly. Listen to me. They are coming to take this land unjustly. Are they right? They are right. They are right. The land belongs to them, right? And God chased them away, right? So they can talk to their God and say, hey God, we need your help here. These people... They are strangers. They have taken our place. Am I right about that? Verse yes. Psalm 24. And verse 1. He says that the earth is what? The laws. And the fullness thereof. And they that way they are in. Or what? Belongs to God. So God has the right to put whomever that he wants to put in that land. Are you following me? Does that make sense? Hallelujah. So I want you to understand that God has a great plan for you. Any man, any woman to whom it may concern that is contesting to take your position away from you 
or trying to displace your children or trying to terminate their destinies by the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost we destroy that in Jesus name Amen. so God has a plan for them and the ghost of the Amorites can do nothing if God is with you who can be against you nobody, nobody. praise the name of the living God are you with me, somebody? Yes. So in that verse 10, he says, I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell, but ye have not obeyed my voice. When he gave them that land, he understands what is going on, but yet the people did not hearken unto the voice of the Lord. Just like in the book of Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1, it says, if thou can hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, I will make thee, I will lift thee up above the nations and the kingdoms of the whole world. Some people don't understand. There are some people that are so wealthy that their money, their personal money of theirs, their personal account is greater than 10 countries put together. And they are existing. They don't have two heads. Someone's not hearing me. Stop underestimating the power of God. Touch your heart a little bit. Say, my heart. My heart. My heart. My heart. Stop. Stop. Doubting God. God. Believe, Believe. In, the power in the power of his might. Of his might. And, whatsoever and whatsoever I ask of him, ask of him he will grant it unto me. Unto Do you believe that? Yes. Shout a powerful hallelujah. hallelujah. Do you know times you want to pray and you find out that deep inside of you, you are struggling to pray. You want to pray, you want to, lay, you want to kneel down and pray, but deep, deep inside of you, it seems as if your prayer is not going anywhere. You're just tired, but you want to pray. Your body says pray, but deep inside is not. You have the power to command your inside and say, you must submit to this prayer. Do you hear me, somebody? Yes. At times you find yourself in a situation where you, you want to pray, but people surround you, and you need to pray. What will you do? You speak in tongues. When you start speaking in tongues, they don't understand what you are saying, but you are now taking your prayer, committing commit, commit it into the hands of the Holy Ghost. When you speak in tongues, you are actually committing your prayers into the hands of the Holy Spirit. And when you commit your prayers into the hands of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit now takes preeminence in that prayer and starts interceding on those even some of the things that you did not mention. Are you with me, somebody? Yes. Praise the name of the living God. Yes. So because they don't listen and because they, they committed sin against God at the time, the Bible stated that actually God sent forth a liberator. And that liberator happens to be a person called who? Gideon. If you read about Gideon, you will see that Gideon destroyed the altar that his father put together. And the people of the land, they came forth and they told the father, bring out your son. He has destroyed our God. We want to kill him. Gideon told his dad, if actually their God is strong enough, let him come and fight for himself. He must not send any man. He must not send any woman to come and fight for him. Are you following me? Yes. I want you to pray right now. Say, God, God. don't allow me God. to become an instrument, become an instrument. Vulnerable, vulnerable in the hands of the, of the enemy. Did you hear that? The Bible said that Satan 
is roaring like a lion. It's not a lion, but he act like one. Seeking whom he may what? Devour. Anyone that is vulnerable, he will use that person to carry out what? His evil acts. But there's a punishment allotted for that individual. Because you allow the enemy to use you. Hallelujah. To carry out the vicious act against a child of God. Against a church of God. Against a, a man of God. Against the country of God. Whosoever it might be. Whatever we can term it to be. That person most definitely what? Pay a very big price. Are you with me, somebody? Yes. I want you to trust what I'm telling you. I'm not here to deceive you. Hallelujah. Amen. The second point, God gave Gideon a special call. He gave him a special call. Subsection A. When the Lord has talked, when the Lord has a task to perform, he has a person for that what? For that task. God cannot create a man without a purpose. Are you listening to me? Are you with me? Yes. Every one of us, you are men and women of what? Purpose. That's reason why God created you. It's not just here for you to have babies or get married or have the education and go. There's a lot that God has bestowed upon you for you to do for him. And he has equipped you for that task. Amen. Are you following me? Yes. Don't let anybody deceive you about that. Bible says you are uniquely made. You are a holy what? Generation. You are a peculiar person. Even if you are a twin, identical twin, both of you have different assignments. God always comes first in everything. We cannot place the place of God. We place it in something that God has made. Are you, are you listening to me? I want to break it down. The Bible says, Seek ye first. What? The kingdom of God. And what? His righteousness. And what? And every other thing shall be what? In addition. If you satisfy these two things, every other thing you will have in your life will be in addition. Not multiplication. God will bring them when you least expected it. Because you have fulfilled the criteria by which God must release that blessings. Are you following me somebody? And he cannot discriminate against you. Are you with me? Praise the name of the living God. So Gideon has already been distinguished as somebody that has the charisma and the strength, you can see how he was talking to God. He wasn't talking to God like he's afraid. He was just talking to God, having a dialogue with God. And God himself called him a man of valor. So Gideon proved himself to God. He proved himself. He proved that actually he can stand for his people. Although he's claiming that he came from a, a poor family and he's the least in his family. How can somebody so wretched like him be the one to God to use to deliver the people? God can use anyone. God can use anybody. Are you with me, somebody? Yes. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. I take you to the book of Judges chapter 6 and look at verse 14. And the Bible says, And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hands of the Midianites. Have, have not I sent thee? Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Subsection B, the Lord called Gideon in two ways. The first, he called him 
by the angel. He sent forth an angel. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. The Lord called Gideon in two ways. First, he called him by what? By an angel. Now look at Judges chapter 6 and verse 11. He says, And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which was in Ophrah that pertained unto Josh the Abira, Ab, 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 and the son of Gideon and the son the son Gideon traced wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Midianites then second the Lord also spoke to him Directly, look at Judges chapter 6 and verse 14. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might. Go in in this thy might. And thou shalt save Israel from the hands of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? Subsection C. God called. Subsection He said. And call came, also his call came in two ways. First, Gideon was to destroy the altar of the Baal and set up the altar of God. Now, now, now listen, let me tell you this. I want to explain this because it's very important. No sacrifice, no covenant that can be enacted without an altar. Every time you will see a sacrifice being offered, that sacrifice must be off offered on an altar. Whether it's a satanic altar or God's altar. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. The cross of Calvary is an altar where Jesus was what? sacrificed. Native doctors, they have their own altars where when the people visit them, then they will kill chicken or goat and pour the blood on that altar. But I want you to understand that every altar it has a priest that officiates in that altar. As I'm progressing, we know why I'm trying to give this explanation. I'm preparing you for the prayers we are going to do. Are you with me? Yes, please, now I want you to understand every time they appear in an altar they have a covenant. And covenant can be established between two or more people. You might be here in America. You might say I'm an American. The altars are everywhere in America. I don't know how many of you that have passed by, you will see some Chinese uh, 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 statues, different type of places all over Houston. There's some hidden altars, there's some visible altars that you and I don't know. But we don't know exactly what exists in that altar. Here I'm standing, this is, this is an altar. Every altar has a priest that serves that altar. And every altar has counselors that make decisions based on that altar. Are you following me? Yes, but every time a covenant is established in an altar, I want you to understand that covenants, they are territorial in nature. Are you following me? Yes, so this morning, we are going to dismantle and destroy altars. Hallelujah. In the book of Psalm 11 verse 3, the Bible says, if the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? Am I right? It's not talking about the foundation of a sinner. He's talking about the foundation of the righteous. 
here in Houston, the day Houstonians voted, I don't want to mention, a particular woman in, because that woman was voted in, he permitted the first church of Satan to be erected in this city. And the first church of Satan was erected in Houston. The very first one in the whole world. That is an evil altar. By the virtue that you, you are a righteous man, you are a righteous woman of God, because you are in this city, you encounter situations, strugglings as a result of that altar. That's why we must appreciate the book of Psalm 11 verse 3. He said, if the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? The righteous can be here in Houston and rapture takes place this minute and they will make heaven. But when it comes to the blessings of God for those that are here because of that evil altar, it will affect them. So tonight or this morning, we are going to deal with what is called personal sins. Then we talk about inherited sins. Then we are going to talk about territorial sin. So when we talk about territorial sin, then we are talking about this particular satanic altar. That through your prayer this moment, we can be exonerated from the forces from that altar. Are you understanding me? If you pray this prayer effectively today, you start seeing changes drastically. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, neighbor. What, you know what you don't know is what that hurts you. What you know will never hurt you. You believe that? Yes. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop this prayer here. But I want us to. I'm going to continue. It. I must finish this ministration. Praise the name of the living God. But now we are going to rise on our feet. We are going to embark on prayer right now. Even you watching on television, I want you to be prepared for this prayer. It's for your own good. Number one, we are going to pray a prayer of repentance. In this prayer of repentance, you start with personal sin. God, God forgive you for any personal sin. Secondly, you pray and you say, God, forgive me for any sin, any generational sin, sin that I've inherited from my father, from my mother, from my foremother, from my forefathers, from both sides of the aisle. God, I stand today. I repent of those sins. These are steps we are going to take. Then after that step, we thank the Lord we go into the second step and the second step is the step where we invoke God and ask God to help us in this particular prayer so that this prayer will produce that result we anticipated. The third phase of this prayer we are now going to pray against satanic altars. Let me tell you this. No matter the town, the village where you came, you came from or you come from, you can stand here and destroy that altar. So today, you are going to pray any altar of Satan or satanic altar 
that the enemy has erected. Because see, when I tell you that altars and covenants made upon them, they are territorial in nature, which means when they do it, whatever they did, even well, let us say India, and you are here, whatever they decree over there, we find you here. But you have the power, hallelujah, to send forth the word of God and destroy every altar, no matter where that altar is, and command that altar to be destroyed. And then as we finish destroying the altars, destroying every invocation, every libation, every decision, that is meant in that altar or in those altars. After that, then we erect God's altar in their place. Are you following me, somebody? I'm not just talking. I have, I have seen this in my lifetime. I have done that and I've seen it work. It's not a joke. If you go back to the book of, of, of Old Kings, you will see when Elijah encountered the 450 priests of Baal, the Bible said that the first thing that he did was reparation of the altar with 12 stones that represents the 12 tribes of Israel. What is reparation? Reparation is repentance. Rebuilding our inner man so that the presence of God can gain access. This prayer is very important. Then we are going to erect a new altar. The Bible stated that Elijah actually used the 12 stones that represent the 12 tribes of Israel. He now rebuilt the altar and at the same time the Bible stated down he said he break firewood and all that and then started cutting the bullocks and laid them on the wood and then he employed them to start pouring water on the, on the sacrifice until the trench is so full that water is prayer so we are going to erect a new altar in a play in the place of the one that had been destroyed. Remember, the Bible wants us to understand that this enemy they live in a season. So when you cast them out, after a while they come back to see where that place is still open. So when they return, they find out that the altar that is there now is the altar of God. When we pray in this prayer, visualize your hometown, your place. If you are born here visualize here if you are born in Africa visualize listen as a spirit when you close your eyes you can find yourself anywhere you want to go no somebody will not understand me if I ask you right now to close your eyes and go to your house you can be telling me and now I get to my garage now I'm opening my door and that step by step, anywhere you go in your room, you'll be, you, can, you can tell me. Your spirit will be moving. Are you with me, somebody? So I want you to visualize yourself wherever you think that that altar is and command that altar to be uplifted, be destroyed. Every altar of Satan that has been erected against you, against your family. Every libation poured upon it that trails you from wherever you are, that try to stop you. Hallelujah. Remember John 10.10. 10. It says Satan has come to steal, to kill, and what? And to destroy. Those are the three things that the enemy does. Each time doors open for him to get in. Today, this prayer is very, very important. Before I get started, can you repeat this after me? Even you watching on television, repeat this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, 
I call upon you right now as a sinner and I ask you Lord to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Lord Jesus, come into my heart right now and be my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you Jesus for saving me. Right now, remember the three point prayer. We are going to pray, call the name of Jesus three times. This prayer will be prayer marathon. I can't stop. I'll be giving you prayer points. You continue praying. Are you with me, somebody? Yes, Praise the name of the living God. Is there any other person outside? Any person inside? Everybody is are there everybody here? Where is where's our brother here? I want to make sure that everybody is in the house. Praise God. Now I want us to pray from our heart of heart. Are you all with me? Yes. Praise the name of the living God. The three point prayer I want you to start with. Call the name of Jesus three times, the blood of Jesus three times, and you are going to pray for personal sins. God, forgive me of every personal sin that I've sinned against you, against any man, against any woman. Secondly, pray against any generational sin, sin that you inherited from your father, from your mother, from your forefathers, from your foremothers. Ask God to forgive you of those things right now. Thirdly, I want you to pray for territorial sin. Because you are here in Houston and now the agent of the enemy has planted that satanic church and you are here. You might say I am holy but because you are in this territory that makes you a sinner. I want you to listen to me attentively. Because you are here in this Houston because this particular altar is established in America it makes everybody in America a sinner. Whether you are a pope, whether you are a bishop, archbishop, it makes no difference because the Bible stated it clearly. It says in Psalm 11 verse 3, if the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? I want you to pay attention. Pay attention to this prayer. It's very, very important. I see God changing things in our lives. I see God elevating us in diverse places that we don't anticipate. I see God bringing great things into our lives. Now remember that prophets, they are agents of release. Nothing works out until prophets are sent. And I want you to understand by the virtue of this great commission upon my life, he has made me a prophet today for you. And I want you to understand as we follow this prayer, you will see God changing situations, circumstances that seem insurmountable in our lives. Are you with me, somebody? But I want you to pray from your heart of heart. The Bible said that a fatu of heaven pray of a righteous man, he said it availed much. Prayers that come from your heart makes the difference. I want everybody close your eyes. Don't look at me because at times our eyes distract us and we, we will not focus. Hallelujah. Close your eyes and focus on God. And right now, I want us to call the name of Jesus three times, the blood of Jesus three times. Prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The immaculate blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Almighty and everlasting Father. Lord, I call upon you right now. You are so wonderful. You are so powerful. Father, there is nothing absolutely that is hard for you to do. Lord, I challenge every challenge. I come against every force of darkness. I pray that your will and your purpose will prevail right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, I pray such each and every one for cleanse us right now. Pray against personal sin. Repent of personal sins. Lord, I call upon you right now. Any personal sin in my life, in my family, Father, I stand today. I repent of such sin in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Any inherited sin, any generational sins, I stand, I repent of such sin. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, I pray at this moment that you cleanse and sanctify us. Father, I challenge every territorial sin. Father, I stand at this moment. I repent of such sin. I plead the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Let that blood that speaketh great and mighty things. Let it speak on our behalf 
even at this moment in the name of Jesus. Father, we come against personal sins, we come against inherited sins, we come against territorial sins, even at this very moment in the name of Jesus. Lord, we plead that blood, that blood of Jesus that speaks great and mighty things. Let it speak on behalf of your sons and your daughters. Father, as our faces is so different, so so is our petitions and supplications. Lord, we pray that you release your anointing upon your sons, upon your daughters, right now in the name of Jesus. I want you to pray, call upon God, seek his help. I've got to bring help right now. Cry unto God. Ask him for his help. Right now, Father, we need your help. Jesus, 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 we need your help right now. Father, we cry out and call upon your great name. We pray for your intervention. Let there be a clear demonstration of your power in the midst of this prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Almighty and everlasting Father, you are so wonderful, you are so powerful. Pray, 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 pray. Open your mouth and pray. Out of the abundance of heart, the mouth speaketh. Pray, 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 pray. Pray, 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 pray. Rakataria kautoriya vasondori mahandaria. Ikaya vasotori vakuriya sandaria. Ninkataya vasotori vakataria. Like a Tavia Vasoria Bacandarima, Landuria Bacoria Vasotori Vasoria Hataria, Kiria Bacandaria Roba Kalia Vasoria Bahataria. God, we invite the presence of the Holy Ghost. We invite the presence of the Holy Ghost. Right now, right now, right now. Mosotaria Bacoria Vasandarima. Lord, we call upon you right now. Yeshua Rabasuria Hatari Hata. Yada, 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 yada. Lord, we call upon you to demonstrate your presence and your power in the midst of this prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Right now, I want you to prepare yourself to uproot and destroy those evil altars. Every evil altar in Houston, every evil altar around your vicinity, every evil altar around this vicinity, every evil altar around your home, around your job, any evil altar around the facility where you find yourself, even in America here, any evil altar in Africa, even in Nigeria, even in Imo State, call the name of your state, call the name of your compound. I want you to pray and command those evil altars to be rooted out. The Bible says what our Heavenly Father did not plant in us must be rooted out. Call upon the Holy Ghost and to help you to root it out. Right now, prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the immigrant blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I call upon you right now. I command every evil altar in this vicinity, every evil altar in America, every evil altar around my home, around my job, every evil altar around this great ministry, every evil altar in Nigeria, every satanic altar in Imo State, any altar, even in Ulafwa, in Obube, in Obafum, in Umeri, Father, even in Amadi's compound, right now, I root you out by the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I root you out. I root you out. I root you out by the powerful blood of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. For Revelation 12, 11 said we defeated the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of our testimony. Lord, I stand on the promise of your own word and I decree and I declare Father, free your sons from every cause. We challenge the priest of that altar. We challenge the priest of that altar. We bind them, we chain them, we cast them into the bottom of the pit. Father, we challenge the cancer from the river. Father, we scatter the effects. Every wicked covenant established on them, we terminate you, we nullify you. We present the blood of Jesus. 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 That blood that speak a great and mighty thing. Let it speak on our behalf, even at this moment in the name of Jesus. Lord, we challenge every power. We come against every forces of darkness. We neutralize them by the powerful blood. The blood of Jesus. That blood that speaks a great and mighty things. Let it speak on behalf of your sons and daughters. Father, we terminate. We destroy that altar right now. In Jesus' name. I want you to call the name of Jesus three times. 
the blood of Jesus three times say God help me to erect God's altar in my home you start with your home you start with the city where you find yourself then you proceed to your hometown your village or your town your state it makes no difference prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ the blood of Jesus the blood of Jesus the immaculate blood of our Lord Jesus Christ almighty and everlasting father we call upon you right now we challenge and we terminate and we destroy and we plant a new altar of God we plant a new altar of God we plant a new altar of God in my home in this place in around this vicinity even in America, even in Houston. Father, even in this Texas, Lord, we stand and we erect a new altar, a altar of fire, a altar that God, Jesus himself, is the, is the captain of that altar. Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we call upon you right now. We pray for your intervention. 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 But we thank you for this new altar that we have erected around this place, even in this place. A new altar. A new altar in our homes. A new altar in any place we find ourselves in the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you the adoration because you are faithful. Let we thank you because you are great. Maso tori basandaria mahataria. Ikaya basuria makandari mahandaria. Ikaya basuria makaria makandari ma. Korea basho sori mahataria. Father, we thank you and we bless you. We give you glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. In Jesus' name. I want you to place your hands on your head. Do something new in my life. Something new in my life. Something new in my life. Oh Lord, do something new in my life. Something new in my life. Something new in my life. We cannot do without you. Oh Lord, we cannot do without you. We cannot do without you. We cannot do without you. Oh Lord, we cannot. Without you, we cannot do without you. Oh Lord, we cannot do without you. We cannot do without you. We cannot do without you. Oh Lord. The Bible says that power of life and death is bestowed upon our tongues. He said that those that know how to use it shall eat the fruit thereof. I want you to call the name of Jesus three times and the blood of Jesus three times. Ask God to release your blessings. Release your positions. Elevate you to that height that you anticipated. Because right now the doors have been opened unto you right now. Everything has been torn down. I want you to bless yourself prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ the blood of Jesus the blood of Jesus the immaculate blood of our Lord Jesus Christ Father I call upon you Father release your blessings in abundance upon the lives of your sons upon the lives of your daughters Lord be a blessing unto your sons open your mouth and bless yourself open your mouth open your mouth Pray, 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 pray. Open your mouth. Bless yourself. Decree things. 
the Bible says you shall decree a thing on earth, and whatever you decree, it has been decreed in heaven. Whatever you bind on earth has been bound in heaven. Open your mouth and bless yourself. I pray that the blessings in the book of Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 to 14, let them become our portions, even this day in the name of Jesus. Even all to the family that are watching from television, even unto the world that are connected to the world anointing center this day. Lord, we pray for your anointing, for your power to resonate upon your sons, upon your daughters. Even this day, open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth. I can see a total deliverance. I can see a complete deliverance. I can see the power of God moving in our midst even at this moment. I can see God changing the dynamics of our lives. I can see God moving in a powerful way. Open your mouth, bless yourself, bless yourself, bless yourself, bless yourself. Right now, Master Tariba Korea Son Tariba. Lord, we challenge every power, we challenge every situation, we challenge every circumstances, even at this moment. In Jesus' powerful name. Almighty and everlasting Father. You are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. You are the ancient of days. The lily of the valley is your great name. Father, we bless you at this moment. We thank you for this great deliverance that has taken place in World Anointing Center today and throughout the whole world. Father, I release your blessings upon your sons, upon your daughters. Father, as we have asked, Father, grant it unto us in the name of Jesus. Father, as our faces is different, so is our petitions and supplications. Lord, we decree and declare that you will be a blessing unto each and every one of us. Father, we thank you for this new altar that we have erected in our homes. We have erected around this world. Father, even this day, Lord, I pray that you release in abundance your blessings upon your sons, upon your daughters. Father, no man, no woman can undermine the lives of your own in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that in this new month, great things, mighty things will start happening all over our lives in the name of Jesus. Lord, I bless you because you're a great God. For the doors you have opened, who can close it? And the one you close, who can open it? Lord, I pray from this day, I release favor in abundance in the name of Jesus. I release your, prote your protection upon your sons in the name of Jesus. I release promotions and ele elevations in diverse ways in the lives of your sons and daughters. Father, I pray that whatsoever that is difficult, Father, now it will become so simple. For the Bible says that the entrance of the word of God bringeth forth light and make it difficult things to become simple. Father, every difficulty in the lives of your son today it has been made simple in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of the living God, take over. We thank you, most excellent God. In Jesus' powerful name we are prayed. Amen. We are going to shout seven powerful hallelujahs. Hallelujah. We are going to shout seven powerful hallelujahs. And as we shout, we are going to call the name of Jesus three times. The blood of Jesus three times. And we are going to shout it and let the walls of Jericho around us, let it fall down flat. Are we ready? In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the immaculate blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because you're a great God. We give you all glory. We give you honor. We seal this prayer with that powerful blood of our Lord Jesus. Thank you, most excellent God. In Jesus' name, Amen. Our God is wonderful. Our God is wonderful. Our God is wonderful. Offering time and tithing time is a 
the blessing come. Hallelujah. Have you seen what the Lord has done? He has destroyed the works of Satan. He has given us victory. That's why we'll sing. Oh, say yeah. Have you heard what the Lord has done?
what you have done in our midst today. Amen. Thank you, O Lord, in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Father, in appreciation, O God, we bring, O God, our offering and our tithing before you. We ask that God you bless it in Jesus' Amen. name. We have obeyed you. You said, O God, that you will, when we bring our offering, you will cause men to give unto our bosses. Yes, Good measure, praise down, shaking together and running over. Amen. Father, we claim it in Jesus' name. Amen. And those that have obeyed you in their tidings, Lord, you promise to open the windows of heaven and pour us blessings yes. in such a manner that there will be no room enough to contain it. Amen. Father, you promise to rebuke the devourer of our yes. sin. My Lord and my King, in Jesus' name, yes. we give you praise because we believe you. Amen. And that settles it in Jesus' name. Amen. Those that have not to give, we ask, oh God, that God will Bless them that some of the time they will be able to give. Amen. That all glory, honor, adoration, and thanks and praise shall be given unto you perpetually in yes. Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Church, please repeat this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I call upon you right now as a sinner and I ask you, Lord, to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Lord Jesus, come into my heart right now and be my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Almighty and everlasting, Father, Father, I thank you and I bless you. I give you glory. I give you all the honor. I give you all the adoration because of your faithfulness. Father, stretch forth your hands and sanctify this holy communion. Father, sanctify the wine and the bread and cause them to become the flesh and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, as we partake in this great miracle meal, Father, let you bring healing, let you bring restoration and deliverance and perfection in all areas of our lives. So we have decreed and prayed in Jesus' powerful name. Amen and amen and amen. Praise the name of the living God. Amen.